My name is Laurel, founder of Laurel's Originals, and I just wanted to share a story with you. Um, I don't know if this story will resonate with any of you about uh, how s something that somebody said, how it had a profound effect on your life. And this is my story of how I became an artist. And it may not be quite what you think it's going to be. Um, I was always, uh, I loved to draw ever since I was a child. I remember in first grade, I was always drawing horse, uh, horses. And, you know, my medium was crayons. And I, um, I loved to draw horses and I loved to draw, you know, all those things that little girls love to draw. And um, I also did a lot of sketching and I like to sketch people. And I'll never forget one day I came home from school. I think I was about 10 years old. And I came home from school and I was sitting on the couch with my mother and I had a little scrap piece of paper and I started sketching her face. And she said, well, are you, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm making a picture of you. And so she showed me a really beautiful technique. So she took the eraser of my pencil. I was using my school pencil, right? And she took the eraser and she just like, just shaded a little bit on her cheek on the little drawing that I was making. And the drawing was only about this big. I mean, it was just a little tiny, you know, it was just her face on a scrap piece of paper. And, um, and so she showed me how when you use an eraser, you can like soften the lines and you can create light in different places. But that's the only thing she showed me. And I drew this beautiful picture of my mother and I wish I still had it. It was just this little tiny thing, but it looked exactly like her. It was incredible. And she said, you know, you should show this to your teacher. And I think I was in fifth grade or something like that. And uh, I don't know, maybe I was younger. Like I was, a, I was pretty young. And, you know, you have one teacher in grade school. And that was like, you know, you really, as a child, I really put a lot of weight on what my teacher said. And, and for me to show this picture that I had drawn of my mother, I mean, I would never have thought of it, but she said, you should show it to your teacher. So the next day I took it to school and I showed it to my teacher and she said, you didn't draw that. I'm sure your mom, I'm sure, I'm sure you were doing it, but your mom helped you a lot. And I was devastated. I, it was like, she was calling me a liar. And, uh, I don't think I mentioned it to my mom. I didn't want to get her upset or anything, but I don't know that it really had a, a stronger effect on me than I realized until later in life. Uh, I did continue to draw and I remember in junior high, it was about 13, 13 years, 12, 13 years old, I really got into charcoals and drawing nudes and I didn't use live models. I just looked at pictures and I would draw nudes and, um, but then when I was going into high school, my dream was to be a stewardess. And my mom said, well, if you want to be a stewardess, then why don't you take drama in school? Because drama teaches you to project your voice and to have confidence in front of a lot of people because you're up on a stage. And so I took drama as an elective. And the school that I went to, La Jolla High School, at the time was famous for its musicals. And so there were a lot of musicals and dancing, and that's where I discovered my love of dancing. I mean, I was always a kid that loved dancing, but I was just fanatical about dancing, and I loved drama, and um, so I didn't take any art classes. I never took any art classes. I've never taken any art classes. Uh, so... Uh, I got into drama, I got into dance, and then I got into surfing and flash forward, you know, till I'm 23 years old, and I decide that I'm going to Machu Picchu, and I get on a bus by myself in Tijuana, Mexico, and again, my mom, I, I, gotta, I gotta hand it to her, she drove me there, <laughs> okay, she drove me to the bus station, 
And so I get on the bus and I'm traveling to Costa Rica where I, to uh, Peru, but I take a stop in Costa Rica and I somehow I ended up on the Caribbean coast where I met my boyfriend who became my husband and the father of my children and my business partner. And so I'm living in Cahuita and after um, I'm in Costa Rica for a couple of years, I go back to San Diego and I was visiting a friend from high school and she was doing a business uh, hand painting t-shirts. And I said, well, that looks like a lot of fun. I could do that because, uh, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have uh, TV or, you know, movies or Netflix or anything to entertain us at night. We worked in the day and then at night, you uh, know, would there just wasn't much for me to do and and I didn't have a lot of friends um and that was more the culture and where I was living I was living in a jungle uh there wasn't a a big population there so um I bought some t-shirts and I bought some tubes of paint and I'll never forget at the art store I call my friend in a panic and I go I just want to get a tube of black and it's there's like four or five different kinds of black and I thought black was black I mean how could there be so many choices in black and she's going calm down get Mars black that's the color you want so I got some brushes and tubes of paint and t-shirts and I went back home to Cahuita and I started painting t-shirts but I was just doing it as a hobby but at the time there was a little shop in Cahuita that wanted to sell things and at that time in Costa Rica there there weren't very there wasn't a lot of tourism most of the tourism was actually from Costa Ricans who would go to the beaches during Easter week and so they asked if I could paint some t-shirts for their stores that said Cahuita on them with the things that I was painting and I just painted what I saw around me the toucan in the mango tree outside my window uh the beautiful fish uh when I went snorkeling in the live coral reefs uh coral snakes hummingbirds all the incredible orchids and flowers and shells and just all the beautiful things living in the tropics and so I painted those on t-shirts and I started selling them to the shop and I didn't consider myself an artist. I was painting something useful. I was painting shirts and then I painted uh, beach covers and I painted uh, children's dresses and I actually taught other women how to paint. And uh, so that's a whole other story about my hand painted dress business, but it's a great story. I'll tell you that story too. And, uh, and then I saw that some people were doing canvas bags and I said, well, that's a great idea. So I started painting on canvas bags and it started out really simple canvas bags with a handle and, but then it, I, you know, it evolved into something where I started designing different bags, bags for traveling, bags for shopping. They were lined, they had heavy duty zippers and they were really a beautiful quality of bag. Again, with the art, with the green frog and with yellow bamboo and with, you know, orchids and, and uh, leaf prints and different things. But I didn't consider myself an artist because I was painting on things that were useful. And, uh, you know, everybody can use a bag, right? And uh, so then one day, I was at a friend's house in Cahuita at the time I was living in, in San Jose, but I was visiting with some friends who still lived in Cahuita. And I saw an article in the Mother Earth magazine about a woman named Lisa Curry Mare who does hand-painted canvas floor cloths. And I was just amazed reading about these floor cloths because I had lived in Costa Rica almost 30 years at that time and we could never figure out what to put on our floors, especially living at the beach. And then, and then I moved to the country in San Jose. So I lived on a farm and we had dogs and we, you know, it was dirty and muddy. And, and uh, so I just thought it was a fabulous product for Costa Rica. And so I bought her book and I learned how to do it. And I was started painting designs for the floors and I wanted to make a website. So I made some floor cloths for my friends so I could take pictures of them and put them on the website. And, uh, and then people started ordering the floor cloths and, but still I didn't consider myself an artist because, Hey, you know, I was making these great things that you could put on the rut on the floors. And, but then people started saying, that's, 
I can't put that on the floor. I would, I would just paint things for myself that wasn't ordered, wasn't a part of an interior design, uh, uh, interior design for somebody's home. And uh, I would just paint things. And I, but for rugs, you know, short rugs, runner rugs, and uh, just to try out new designs, just to have things in my art studio when people came to visit, to go to craft shows. And people started buying my things and saying, I'm going to put this on the wall. How can I hang this on the wall? And I figured out how you could hang them on the wall. And uh, you can slit the corners and pass a rod through it. And then people started ordering things for me to hang on the wall. And um, finally, after, you know, 40 years of painting on T-shirts and bags and rugs, people were putting my things on the wall. And I thought, hey, I'm an artist. And... That was my own personal journey to realizing that I really was an artist. I was always an artist from the time I was a little kid doing a little sketch of my mom on a scrap piece of paper to doing all the paintings and the t-shirts and the canvas bags and the rugs and now the wall hangings. Um, I'm now painting on walls. I'm painting on furniture. Um, I'm still doing the canvas bags and uh, that's my journey to being an artist was my own realization in my head and all I have to say is you teachers out there you have no idea how powerful your word is to the children that are in your classroom and when a child comes to you and says look what I did don't call him a liar I'm it's not fair and um, I just want to thank all the people that have supported me along the way from my very first canvas floor cloth and to all of the exciting designs and opportunities that I have to do, things I never in a million years thought I would be painting. Um, and then having the liberty of my own designs that just come out of my head and the art that comes out of my head that you know it's just struggling to get out and I paint it and then I said well I painted this anybody want to buy this and and uh, so it's it's been really wonderful um, so I just wanted to share that with you and that uh, even though I never studied art I could always draw I love to paint I love beautiful things I live in a beautiful country and I really appreciate the trust that people put in me because you buy a canvas floor cloth, you're going to be living with it for a very long time. And so we put a lot of love and a lot of thought into every project that we do. And I really appreciate you watching my video and you can subscribe to this channel where we have lots of videos with Q and A's uh, and just different designs that we've made over the year. Uh, and also um, check out our Facebook page because there's always opportunities to um, see new designs that are happening and all the stories and, and different uh, suggestions for how to use the canvas rugs. And if you sign up for the newsletter, I just have this quirky thing of giving things away. So, you know, sometimes at Christmas, everybody who's on my newsletter list gets a set of coasters, okay? I mean, no strings attached. Just send me your address. I'll mail you some coasters. We have raffles for canvas rugs. We have raffles for placemats or design your own placemat or deep discounts or free shipping or uh, just to see the first, you know, the first view of a new design and, and have a, a, you know, uh, an offer for, you know, first, first come, first served. And so uh, sign up for the newsletter. It's really fun. It, you know, it comes out maybe once or twice a month. It's We're not in your face every week, but it's well worth it. And um, so I just want to thank you. And um, this is Laurel from Laurel's Originals. And I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.